All right, guys, so I've been waiting for this day for quite some time, and I'm going to show you guys what I just got, and I'm going to install. We finally received our Tesla Universal wall connector. And the reason we need the Universal one is because we have non-Teslas, and it won't be a problem in a couple of years because everybody's moving to NACs anyways, but we do have a Lightning, a Rivian, an e-tron at the shop. And what we've been having to do is constantly plug and unplug from our NEMA 1450. And that's just getting a little bit cumbersome now. I also worry about the, the receptacle lasting. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna install this universal wall connector and no longer have to unplug from the recept anymore. It's gonna be hardwired in. We're gonna get this installed. I did hear from a client, and the reason we're making this video is one of our Rivian clients got one of these. He's got a Model Y and a Rivian. And he said that when he plugged his Rivian in, uh, it would not charge it. So I looked into it a little bit, and it sounds like there's something you have to set up in the menu uh, for this wall connector to get it to charge a non-Tesla. So we're gonna show you guys exactly what happens when once the, you know, we're gonna show you guys exactly what happens once we get this thing installed, fired up. We'll plug it into the Tesla. I assume it's gonna start charging right away. Then we'll plug it into one of our non-Teslas, see what happens. And then we'll go through the troubleshooting process or the setup guide to get that to work and share that with you guys. So in the event that you guys want to get one of these, you'll know exactly what to do. So let's open this guy up and show you what's inside. All right, check this out. I'm going to read this to you. I haven't even read this yet, so I haven't even opened it. But thank you for accelerating the world's transition to sustainable energy. And that's it. <laughs> and then it's in a bunch of other languages. Spanish, probably uh, Japanese, Chinese, all kinds of stuff. Anyways, so in here, you've got your wall connector. I'm going to open this up. Take all the contents out. Oh, well, wonderful. Wall connector, probably some instructions and something fell down over there, but it's gonna appear magically. Look, it just appeared. And well, that, so, I saw, oh, look, this came too, just flying off the floor. All right, so there's a couple other things here. This probably shows you how to do some, where the mounting holes are or something like that. This is a template. This is your template for drilling into your wall. All right, perfect. So you got that, this is a beautiful wall connector, well for the white one. Now what I read, and I haven't measured it yet, but this should be a 24 foot cable. Uh, I believe my very original mobile connector I got on my 2020 Model 3 was only about 16 feet, then Service Center ended up swapping it out and I got a longer one, so I did measure that at my house. That one's 20 feet, and according to what I read on this one, this is 24 feet, so this will definitely help me a lot. Uh, especially since uh, all the non-Tesla charging ports are on the wrong side of the vehicles, you know? So having a longer cable is definitely gonna help. All right, well, we'll show you guys. We'll get this thing mounted on the wall and we'll get it plugged in. All right, guys, well, they're in. We got two Tesla Universal wall connectors installed in the garage. We got one right here behind me and then I have another one on the opposite side. This really makes charging extremely convenient with whatever vehicle I have. So I can actually have it in the driveway. I can have it inside the garage on either side and, and there's no issues. There's nobody having to walk over um, any cabling. Now this is what I was dealing with before. All I had was a 1450 plug, a NEMA plug installed on the wall. I also had a 1030 that I would use. Um, but man, having to unplug and replug in these different 1450s from the wall became pretty cumbersome. So we got, we got Ford, we got Audi, we have Rivian, we have Tesla. I was super over it. 
Well, Tesla provided this solution where they've got the universal wall connector, which has the J1772 and obviously your NAX all built right into this. So that makes it extremely convenient for us now. After installing this system though, I wanted to figure out how the load balancing or power sharing works. So Tesla actually gives you some really, really cool options in their software. And I could not figure out how to access the software. So what I did initially was you got some paperwork you know, you'll get like a QR code, for example, like this. When you scan this, it'll essentially take you to the Tesla app. And in the Tesla app, you can actually set up some basic parts. You can name this device and stuff in your Tesla app. But it doesn't actually get you to the real software where you can basically inform the system how many amps you want going to this device or another device should you have more than one wall connector. And that's what I really need to figure out because I have two wall connectors, but I do have them running on independent breakers. So I've got a sub panel right there that actually has all our NEMA plugs. And in that sub panel, it's being fed obviously by a main breaker that's in our main panel. Well, I'm feeding different breaker sizes to each of these. One of them, I have a 60 amp breaker and the other one is a 30 amp breaker. And the reason I did that is what, you know, the Teslas I don't need to worry about. They don't need to take very long to charge. The other one, however, I need it to be, you know, charging at a higher speed for my Rivian um, and, and the Lightning, for example. Well, I wanted to make sure that I could plug both of these in to two vehicles at the same time and not have it exceed any limitations. And I couldn't figure out how I could get into the system to program that. So I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that. Um, so the first thing you guys are going to do is you're going to, you're going to name your systems and stuff just like you normally would, right? But now you need to take the next step. So you're going to go in and you're actually going to push this button on the NAX for like five seconds, which I've already done, until this starts blinking. Once that starts blinking, it's basically telling you that you need you can connect to the Wi-Fi network coming out of this wall connector. So you'll connect to that on this piece of paper. There's a QR code, and then there's going to be a password essentially for that Wi-Fi network. So you do that, you attach, you connect to that Wi-Fi, then you go to your. I found it easier to do on my computer. You could probably just do it from your phone as well but I grabbed my laptop, connected my laptop to that Wi-Fi network, and then I went to an IP address, which I'll share with you. It's in the actual Tesla wall connector instructions. They're like PDF instructions, which I could not find in this box. It was actually the electrician who found this information for me. So I typed in the, uh, the IP address was 192.168.92.10. All right, and then when I was connected to that wall connector, it brought up essentially this menu here for me. Now in this menu is where you can indicate what all you want it to do. So because I'm not running a single breaker and load sharing off of that breaker to both of these wall connectors. So say for example, you have a 100 amp breaker that you've connected both of your wall connectors to that 100 amp breaker you can actually program the system to load balance off of that single breaker. So you indicate in here under power sharing that you have a 100 amp breaker. Now, in order for me to get power sharing to work, I actually have to add the second wall connector. I didn't want, I didn't need to do that because I'm actually feeding both of these devices with separate breakers in the sub panel. They don't need to load share, I guess you could say, for that reason. But what they do need to do is this system needs to know what the max breaker size is for the main breaker that's feeding this sub panel so that the summation of these two wall connectors does not exceed that output. Uh, and, and that's essentially what I've done here. So I've programmed 
the breaker sizes for each of my wall connectors independently of each other. This one is a max 30 amp breaker. That one is a 60 amp breaker. You indicate that here. So I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back here and installation. So if you have a single wall connector, this is what you would do. You indicate your country and then you can indicate what your breaker size is. So one of mine, I have 30 amps. The other one, I chose 60 amps. Now, if I were to connect to my Wi-Fi network on my other wall connector that's over there and go to this IP address, it will show that one as being capable of outputting 48 amps. So that's what I've done here. That's a great thing here. Again, in power sharing, you could go in here, add your second wall connector, up to six of them actually, and then you can go in here into power sharing settings. And in power sharing settings, you can say, hey, I have a 100 amp main breaker feeding both of these systems. And you could even say you have a single um, breaker in your sub panel even feeding both systems. It, it, it gives you a lot of different options. It's, it's very, very neat and very, very um, smart to make sure that you don't make any mistakes and cause any problems in your, in your house or your business. So that's kind of like it guys i mean that those are my favorite features this this software right here is amazing uh, the fact that you can set it up in so many different ways and I, I hope this is somewhat helpful for you guys i love the wall connector i love my shiplap wall that was a great idea that i did when i first did my system uh, when i got my model 3. the shiplap is great because when we had to install conduit and everything for that wall connector I was literally able to just pull the wall down because it's just in there with brad nails. And I basically furred out the wall to make it, you know, plumb and flat. And uh, I was just able to rebuild it. I didn't have to break any sheetrock. I didn't have to do any paint, any texturing. It's fully insulated back there and everything too. So that's pretty cool. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this was informative. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. If you guys do need to get your Tesla Universal Wall Connectors, go to their website. It's on their shop. Buy one, get yourself a Tesla, get yourself a non-Tesla. Doesn't matter, because that'll do both. See you on the next one, guys.